Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the wonderful St. Anna here in Hirschbach in Germany. And it is absolutely Baltically cold here. Um, there are another variety of adjectives I would like to use in front of the word cold, but as it's a church, I'm going to behave. But it's freezing in here, which of course means the tuning of the organ is an absolute disaster. I'm going to show you that in a minute for fun. But before we get round to that, what I am going to do is remind you that last week's video, which was posted, which we called Advent at the Organ, um, it was a sort of little, there was a little competition in there. And the improvisation I played from Gackenbach, from the church, there was a sort of church tune hidden in there. Now it is a German church melody, and a number of people from around the world thought they would get in on it as well. And some people had some rather nice suggestions for what they thought that song was. Uh, None of you, not even in the German-speaking version, none of you have got it right yet. So either it was so well hidden that nobody can recognize what it is, or I was a bit misleading with my title from the video. I said Advent at the organ, so everybody automatically thought, aha, it must be an Advent hymn. It's not an Advent hymn. I did give you a slight clue last week, the uh, international version of the video. I said it's a modern him and it's a sort of a modern yeah modern german hymn that you find you do find it in the hymn book you find it in the protestant hymn book and in the catholic hymn book so it is a well-known modern german hymn so have another listen there's a link to the video from last week is it there or is it there i think it's there um a link to the video from last week have a look, have another look, have another listen, see if you can work it out. And the winner, the first person to get it right in the comments below, the first person to get it right wins one of our new CDs. It's cold. So while you're down there commenting, like good little commenters that you are, um, commenters, commenters, commentators, commentators. That's one of those words that I've never used in the English language, or certainly not in the last 20 years. I've been in Germany for 20 years now, and I can't remember the English language. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Let me know what you think. So while you're down there commenting, there we are, let's leave it as that, um, you will also find a couple of links to the sponsorship possibilities we have on our channel. We still are involved with Patreon and Steady, that's sort of a monthly membership thing, uh, which helps us, out, helps us out very greatly. And there's also the possibility to donate just something, if you want, with paypal.me. That's also very greatly received. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, yeah, so what are we going to do today? Why on earth are we here, wrapped up in our winter coats, sitting at a freezing organ in a freezing church in a freezing town in the middle of freezing Germany. Well, I actually want to show you that, you know, the poor old organs in these churches, they really don't like these sort of weather changes. A couple of weeks ago, the organ builder was here and tuned the organ, which is great, but far too late in the year. There's no point coming in October, November to tune the organ because you know winter's coming and it's going to go crazy with the temperatures. And We've put some lights on in the church that you can see down there. I mean, it's not the biggest church in the world here, but it's, you know, it's a big space full of air, yeah? And um, a big stone building full of air. And, of course, that temperature changes around. There's all those kinds of humidity changes as well. And, of course, the organ just goes in and out of tune all the time. But, as most of you or some of you will know, there are two different types of organ pipes, some of which go in and out of tune more readily than others. For example... When you tune the organ, you have a sort of reference stop, yeah? And that's usually the principal forefoot on the grate, or as it's called here, octave forefoot. And it's always in tune with itself. Oops. Switch the organ on. Perfect. Four different octaves, all perfectly in tune with each other. If I get some other sort of pipes around there, and play the same thing. This should also be in tune. There are no reeds involved. These are just the flu pipes. Yeah, that slight sort of vibrato effect there, that means one of those pipes is out of tune. I know it's the two foot stop up there. And of course, that's just quite simply, it changes in temperature, yeah? When they change, when they, 
uh, tuned the organ a couple of weeks ago. There's another English word I couldn't remember. When they tuned the organ a couple of weeks ago, they, um, you know, it was 12 to 15 degrees outside normal sort of autumn temperatures and now of course it's zero degrees or even minus degrees and it's just been it's been raining for like weeks snowing now actually so you know it's this affects the organ in a great way you can of course heat the church keep to try to keep it constant temperature problem with that is of course it costs an absolute fortune yeah we have a very old-fashioned sort of heating system in the church here and it costs a fortune to keep it running all the time um, so, you know, the organ has to suffer as a result. Now, back to what I said that the um, trumpet stop, the reed stops, they are so badly out of tune, it's frightening. Listen to this. Yeah, now that's sort of unusable at the moment. And there's quite a handy feature on this organ over here. There are three little switches here, boom. And if I switch them on, those three reed stops, I only have three reed stops in this organ, thankfully. Imagine there were more, that would be hell. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't, but it would be when they're out of tune. You can sort of switch them off permanently. So even if I press the tutti button here, your full organ, if I press the tutti button here, it's absolutely marvelous because the organ is still in tune without those reeds. <laughs> Absolutely fine, isn't it? It doesn't sound too bad. <sighs> At least something works. When the organ's badly out of tune like this, it gives me an excuse to switch the reeds off completely and then sort of just leave them until, well, let's say just before Christmas, yeah? Now, at Christmas time, it's quite good because the church is so busy, they keep the heating on. So I go into the organ before Christmas, tune up the reeds to make sure they're all right, and that means that the Christmas services, which are of course, you know, big happy events, the organ's back to sort of full pelt uh, with all the stops all in tune and everything is okay. But at the moment in the run-up to Christmas, it's Advent, and of course I leave out the reed stops, which means the organ is, it sounds a little bit quieter, you can still beef it up a bit. And uh, yeah, so that means you can play sort of nice little dainty pieces or sort of certainly pieces that are not quite as bombastic. Now, a couple of weeks ago, um, I received quite a number of comments from people who said, eh, we haven't had many videos from you lately and we certainly haven't had any jazzy videos from you lately. Well, I'm going to play something jazzy today again for you. So, um, one of my favorite composers, especially for early jazz stuff, is uh, Fats Waller, Thomas Fats Waller, who himself was a jazz organist. And back in the late 20s, he sort of formed a little group with his chums and um, they called themselves the Louisiana Sugar Babes, which was kind of a cool name for a group of guys in New York. Anyway, the Louisiana Sugar Babes. And they recorded some tunes together. There was a clarinet, there was a trumpet. Fats Waller was sitting at the organ in his local church in New Jersey. And his piano teacher, Mr. James P. Johnson, coincidentally the guy who composed the Charleston, uh, James was sitting at the piano. So we have clarinet, trumpet, organ, and piano. And they recorded sort of half a dozen little numbers, one of which is, of course, a Fats Waller composition called Willow Tree, a nice sort of gentle bluesy number. <laughs>
was Willow Tree. Hope you liked that. So, that's it for today. It's so cold here. My wife has just sort of said, that's it, we're going. Well, I've had enough. So, I have to, of course, obey. That's what you have to do. So, uh, yeah, we're going to pack up and go home for the night. I have to cut this video, edit this video, and get it posted for the weekend. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Don't forget, down below, there's plenty space for your comments. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. Please ring the little bell to keep updated of all our new videos. And, of course, don't forget to help us out if you want to. Thank you very much. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Until then, bye-bye.